Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. There's a little something on that screen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button. If you are not new here, welcome back friends and family. I know that I have been a little bit gone the past, past cute, rare. I have been gone a little bit the past couple of weeks. We are doing one, our final move from Germany to the United States, but I did keep a couple pieces back. So you can expect a few videos from me before we actually move on the 14th of February. And then once I get settled, I am back for good. So today I am going to be doing this piece, which as you can tell, <laughs> this isn't driving you crazy. The handles are on upside down. I did not do that, it came like that. So we will be fixing that. But I am going to do a little technique that I have been trying to work on and perfect. And it is some peekaboo gold leafing with maybe a little bit of blending, some texture, and I just wanna kinda of show you guys how to do that and get an authentic, kind of worn look with some leafing popping through. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna use gold, silver, or copper right now. That is to be determined. That is to be determined. Anyways, if you guys wanna see that, stay here. The first thing I did was remove the upside down hardware. So I took a small little hammer and what I'm going to do is gently try to pry the center so that I can loosen the sides. That way I can take a flathead screwdriver and put it underneath where the nails are and kind of toggle it side to side to loosen it more. Then what you want to do is take needle nose pliers and carefully pull each nail out. I'm gonna clean this piece really well with sugar soap in order to get all of the dust and dirt off and degrease it, and that way it will be ready for my paint. So I'm gonna use a microfiber cloth, clean it off really well, and then once it's fully dry, I will go in with my first coat of paint. My base layer is gonna be a color called Myrtle, and it is by Pure Eco, which is a company based out of Australia. This is their chalk line. So I'm going to put a coat of Myrtle down, let it fully dry, and then put a second coat down. And that way I'll have a good base coat and I'll have a base for where I'm gonna put my metal leafing. So I am going to use an, a metal leaf adhesive and I'm going to apply it randomly in areas with a paintbrush. Now, it depends on how much peekaboo metal leafing you want. So if you want a lot, you're gonna put a lot of metal leafing down. If you don't want as much, then you can use it a little bit more sparingly. I put more down because it's easier to cover it up and just pull back what you want versus add more later. So my suggestion would be to add more than you think you're gonna want because you can always cover it. Then you're gonna let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes to tack up. It's not going to fully dry, it's going to stay tacky. And so you're gonna let it tack up and then you're going to put whatever color leafing you want down. For this, I'm using copper and gold and I'm going to just put it down in all the sticky areas. Now, I don't want it to be perfect because we're gonna go over it, we're gonna scrape it back, so this isn't going to be this perfect leafing job like some people want, and so we're just going to add it in the areas. Now, if you do not cover the areas with the adhesive, it's going to remain tacky, so make sure that you go through and you cover it. For this, because I put it over a chalk paint, I could see where all the adhesive was, but sometimes you can't. So make sure that you're covering all your adhesive. And then once you are done applying it all, you're going to take a clean paintbrush, dry paintbrush, and you're, you're going to brush across it and you're gonna go in circles to get all the excess off and just kind of smooth it as much as you possibly can. Next step after you have gotten all your excess leafing off is to use salt wash. You can use whatever your texture additive is that you prefer, but I like salt wash for this. And what this is going to do is, I want you to think about this salt wash as being a resist for us. So it is going to add kind of dimensions of texture, things like that, because we're gonna have it scrape back and you'll see things underneath. But this is going to be used specifically for a resist and I'm going to put more of it over top of the leafing areas and a little bit over top of the paint 
Now, the bigger droplets of the salt wash that you let fall down, the bigger it's going to scrape back and you're gonna be able to see that. So you want to apply as much of the salt wash as you want, and then what you're going to do is you're going to wet it just with a spray bottle of water, get it nice and wet, and you want this to dry thoroughly. I do this on all of the sides and then I let it dry overnight. The next step for this particular makeover was to add the blues. So for the bottom color, I am putting Deadly Nightshade by Daydream Apothecary Paint. Now, because you are using salt wash, some areas are going to be a little bit loose and you're going to see some powder coming off in some of these clips. It is important that you pour your paint out into a separate container instead of dipping your brush in your paint and then painting it like this because you will cross contaminate it. I did end up, so I'm going to put one coat and this one now is right above the Deadly Nightshade and this one is Sela V and it's the coastal line for Daydream Apothecary. But in the end, what I did is I put all these colors, let it dry, and then I did a second layer of these colors as well before I went in and blended. This next color is called Cosmic Conquest and this is from the Free Spirit line, which is my line and I curated these colors. The last color I am adding is called Tailwind, and I wanted to use something that was a bluer, lighter shade, so that way when I blended, everything would just come together. So we're moving to the next step, and what I ended up doing is I did two coats of each color, and then I took that Cosmic Conquest and I kind of just pulled it down the center of the piece. The reason why I did that is because I wanted that to create kind of a highlight to where it looks like there's a light shining down. So the first step of this is to take the Deadly Nightshade and use a thin layer and go over all of the areas where the Deadly Nightshade is because we want wet paint. The key with a clay and chalk mixed paint is to use more of the moisture from the paint versus putting a bunch of water down because it will reactivate and pull your paint back. So I am adding Deadly Nightshade over just a thin layer over everything and then i'm going to just spray a little bit of water and now i'm adding sila v over all the areas where there was already sila v and we're going to start our blending so what i'm going to do with the sila v and the deadly nightshade is toggle between the two colors so right now i'm taking my sila v and i'm going over some of that deadly nightshade going over a little bit of that cosmic conquest that's in the center and I'm just kind of adding a layer of wet paint there so that way it makes it easier for us to blend. Once I've added my layer of Sela V and Deadly Nightshade, I'm going to mist the area and I'm going to take my Deadly Nightshade brush and I'm gonna just kind of feather it over top of the Sela V so that way I can start the blend with those two paints and this is going to just help kind of melt these colors together. When you're using a chalk and clay based paint, they are fairly easy to blend. So make sure you're using a light hand. And if you want to darken things up like I am right here, you can add a little bit more of whatever color you want. So right here, we're going to do Deadly Nightshade. And then I'm going to add a little Sela V over top of it and work those together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working my way towards the center so that way we can get that to look more blended. So I'm going to add a little bit more Cosmic Conquest on there. And then once I'm done putting the Cosmic Conquest on, I'm going to take my Sela V brush and I'm going to start feathering it so that way we can push that Sela V into the Cosmic Conquest and that way it's going to start blending a little bit easier. Once I added a little bit more of my Sela V to go over that Cosmic Conquest, I am now going to take my Deadly Nightshade brush and I'm going to start working from the outside in. This kind of blend does take a few steps and it's a little bit more gradual of working back and forth. But what I'm doing here is I'm taking my Cosmic Conquest brush. I didn't add any more paint and I'm just kind of lightly going over that area so we don't lose that highlight. 
So what we're doing is we're misting it. We're going to take that Cela V brush and kind of work that Cela V over into that Cosmic Conquest, not trying to take over the Cosmic Conquest, but just trying to get it over there enough to where it's going to start blending into one another. Then once we're done adding the Cela V, we're going to go over that area where there's a transition between the Cela V and Deadly Nightshade one more time. So it's kind of a process. There's a few steps, right? You're going to work the Deadly Nightshade and Cela V together, then the Cela V and Cosmic Conquest. Then you're gonna go back to the Cela V and the night Deadly Nightshade. So there are a few little steps to make sure that it gradually goes together. But once you have it at this point right here, it is ready for the brand new brush that is called the Kirstana brush that I love using so much to do a final blend. So I'm going to miss the whole area and I'm going to take that brush with a light hand and go over it horizontally first. And then you're going to see me turn it and go in those smaller areas. Then I'm going to take it and go vertically. I will go diagonally and this is going to just bring everything together. But in between, make sure you're wiping your brush so that way you can keep it clean and neutral and you don't have too much paint on it. And that is going to help you just blend everything beautifully together. The blending process will be the same up at the top. What you're gonna do is just toggle between colors, add a little bit of that Deadly Nightshade, put some of that Cela V over it, blend those two together, then take your Cosmic Conquest and kind of work over those colors and just toggle between those brushes to with a light hand and just very minimal water to get those colors to kind of blend together. And then what you'll do is you'll take your clean dry neutral brush, which is the Cristana brush in this instance, you're going to spray it with water and you're going to lightly go over it to just do that one little final blend. Here comes probably my favorite part. Once everything is dry, you're gonna take a paint scraper, whether it's metal or plastic, and you're gonna carefully scrape back all those areas where they look like little tiny bumps on the entire piece. Those are all where your salt wash is dry, and that is the area where it has the resist, right? So remember we talked about that. So now when you scrape those back, you're gonna see your leafing pop through. So whatever that salt wash looks like on your piece, that is what it's going to look like at the very end when you pull it back. So if you want a lot of this stuff coming through, put a lot of it on. If you only want minimal, put a little bit on and you won't have as much. You get to control it. So you can control what it looks like at the end because wherever you put it is where that resist is gonna be. So that's what I'm doing here. And because there are little areas that are carved out, I'm going to carefully go through those areas and take that out of there too. But I really like a nice, good distressed piece. So I mean, the more the merrier for me anyway. But you can see over here to the right of this, how I want you to pay attention to the top of the corner of the drawer. And I just, I love how when you, when I scraped it back, all that resist comes and it just shows so much copper leafing. And I'm just, this is my favorite part.
I want to show you a couple more tricks when I'm getting a weathered finish. So right now what I'm doing is I'm spraying the water and I'm taking a two ply napkin and I'm pushing it up against there. And what I'm doing is I'm hoping that the napkin will stick to the paint and then it'll pull back. So this kind of paint, a paint with clay and chalk needs to be sealed. And so that's why this will work so well is if you push down on it, you'll be able to pull it back, especially if it's over leafing because it is a metallic underneath there. So it'll be easier for me to pop it back. Once I seal, it'll be fine. Also, if you didn't notice there were some drips on the piece or you'll see the drips on the piece, what I do is I pull all the drawers out equally. And when you do lighter to darker, when you spray some water, especially with a paint that's got a clay in it, you can spray it and just create an even more weathered look by having it just drip down the front of all of your drawers. Last but not least, it is time to seal this. And this again is one of my favorite parts besides scraping things back because once you add your sealer, it just richens your piece. And I just really like doing this. I just really like doing this part. And the sealer that I'm using is Dream Coat. So it's a water-based sealer. And again, you wanna make sure you're sealing this because leafing needs to be sealed and this paint needs to be sealed. So I hope you guys enjoy this because I super love this piece so much. All right, everybody, this piece is done. This video is done. I'm gonna step back. Let's adjust this so that you guys can see it. There we go, okay. This piece is done. I hope you enjoyed that video. I have plans for maybe two other videos before I actually ship out and go back to the United States. So this will be one of my last pieces here in Germany. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to pan over with the video so you guys can see it more up close. Make sure you're subscribed. Also, <clears throat> make sure you're subscribed if you're not. And again, happy creating guys and I'll see you later. Bye. been on my mind sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light hey darling we could get out of town see the beautiful world around wanna see it now pack our bags and get in that car real far let's get out we can leave this city let's drive to the open air yeah the countryside is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair we can look back someday baby don't you understand that we only get one life away